Alcohol has been an important part of human culture for thousands of years. Beer jugs from as far back as 10,000 BC have been found in Egypt. The ancient Chinese were producing and enjoying wine as far back as 7,000 BC. From then to the present day, wine and beer have been important to people in all sorts of religions and culture, cultural situations. Mm. That sounds really good. Definitely a new world converged demeanor. Gorgeous. Absolutely delicious. I really like it. Yeah, me and a friend usually produce about 300 gallons a year, and it's just for our own enjoyment and uh, giving it away at potlucks and various other island functions. I met a man when I was 19 years old at a bar, like I'm sure many people meet at bars, and um, we fell in love and got married, and it was wonderful, and... After that, I really never touched alcohol. I don't think I ever will. You're bound to hit the negative sides. You know, I know there's a lot of times when I've been behind the wheel of my truck, and I shouldn't have, and, uh, you know, sometimes, like I say, you pay the price the next morning, and you just... Uh, yeah, there's, there's that. It occasionally plays havoc with relationships. As years went by, my uh, husband, at the time he was just my boyfriend, um, I noticed that he drank a lot, but you know, he was a very nice, he's a very nice man. He's still a very nice man. Come home on the weekends and we'd go out and we'd still go for dinner with friends and have bottles of wine and we'd have a good time. But during the week, when I wasn't there, it continued for him. Um, for him, it started to affect his job, and uh, I think it affected our relationship. Well, it's probably. a really social activity, just the, the making of it, organizing everything. You uh, put in long hours when you first get the grapes, and you get to watch it and nurse it for sometimes two years before you even get to taste the, the results of your labors. I think people don't realize about this. Alcoholics, their number one purpose in their life is to get that drink. Even if it's just one, they're, it's always getting a drink, and that's number one on their list. Everything else comes second to it. I would, like, watch my dad, like, abuse my mother because, like, he would come home drunk every day and start abusing my, my mother. He wouldn't abuse us, but he would always abuse my mother. And like we would go out, out, out into town for a day and he would, we would come home and my mom would have a black eye or, or something. And, and we would occasionally come home to the cops in front of our door. Yeah, I, I suppose it's actually the making of it, just the the good times in in working together with with a few other people and shared interest, and we always have you know music going and some decent finger foods to nibble on, and it yeah it's it's mainly a social aspect. Finally, as a family, it was one Christmas, probably in '97, I guess it was. We just said we have had enough. We love you. We are willing to put you into detox if you want to accept this, but we are not willing to support you in your life. Wine is the blood of civilization, and I thought that was very poignant. I thought that sort of rang true in a lot of different ways if you look at um, you know, the history of European empires and stuff and how wine had such a big influence. His mom had called me and she had said, <clears throat> she was really scared, and she had said he's going to do something, and we were scared at the time that he might have was going to commit suicide, that he wanted to end his life. And I think for him, the day, uh, he made a choice, and his choice was to call AA, which was a big step for him. And he has, I mean, he's been sober now nine years. Like, I didn't want to end up like my sister and my mother. Like, it's really easy for me to get addicted to stuff. Like, I was lucky that I didn't, like, 
become an alcohol after that first drink I took. My brother would took brought home a bottle of vodka once and we drank that and then at the time I thought it was pretty good but after I got sober and I looked back and I was all choked up because I was afraid I'd become my dad. Like, I, I, I didn't want that. I think the majority of people that are ordering, you know, wines, it's part of their experience with their meal. It's not about overconsumption. There's a, there's a sophistication and an elegance to their dinner that, uh, that doesn't, you know, lend itself to, like, pounding beers. Oh, occasionally. There's the odd morning when I, I realize I've overindulged, but... Uh... We're getting better at it. We used to bottle in half gallon and gallon jugs and it was pretty much you take the top off and throw it away. So you're committed to finishing the bottle. Actually, I'm always amazed at the nicest people. <laughs> They're sober. You put a drink in them and it's like Jekyll and Hyde. And well, what I would say is um, drinking kills. Wine has a history of bringing people together. They bring family together. It's a time, when you're drinking wine, it's a time, it's a, it's a celebratory to sit down with dinner and share bread and drink wine and all the religious aspects of sharing wine as well, the blood of Christ. I lost my sister and my mother to alcohol. I don't want that happening to anyone else. Because after I, like first I lost my sister and then I lost my mother and I felt like getting back into alcohol. And we all go through a phase in our life where we party, we have a good time, and alcohol is part of that. But then we wake up one day and it's like, okay, I've got to work, I, you know, I want to buy a house, I've got kids, I've got whatever, and we stop drinking and we become responsible in how we are, where there's a population, a percentage of the population of us who can't do that. We're all exposed to alcohol in almost every culture, at least every first world culture that I know of, alcohol is a part of our life. It's a part of, you know, who we are, the bread and wine, the, you know, it's in our religion, it's in, it's everywhere. So it's like to, to drink, we know why. It's, it's a good thing. <laughs> but to stop drinking, it's like, why do we stop? What makes us stop drinking? And for some of us, you can't stop. And I think the, the most important thing when it's all said and done, when you talk about the historical aspects of wine and all the environmental aspects and all the interesting to know, is I think the one key thing that throws it all together at the end is that it's so damn delicious.